Oh, g'day, didn't see you there. What is up everyone? We are back working on the Fevo, aka fake Evo, aka the budget Evo build. Alright, so yesterday's video, a little bit of a fail. But you can't get it right every single time. And I'd rather be honest with you guys on the channel rather than just have things go right all the time, right? So I came back today with a fresh brain that wasn't all buzzed by fuel fumes. Uh, feeling fresh with a new perspective on uh, the fuel pressure regulator setup. And now you'll be happy to know that it's all sorted out. Look at that. Super tidy, right? So the problem was the fitting at the end of the rail here. So we got rid of that and instead I fitted uh, a fitting to the end of the rail off a spare R34 turbo um, fuel rail that we had. So fuel rig off that. Had the exact same uh, fitting that goes into the rail that seals it all up nicely with the rubber o-ring. And then what I did was just hollow it out. So it's not actually acting as a fuel pressure regulator, it's literally hollow. Um, but that way we could, it just works super well with being able to connect the hose up to our fuel pressure regulator. So that loops around up to here and then the return goes through. Now, no more leaks, runs perfectly and I'm very happy. And also it's just much tidier because it doesn't have that kind of loop coming off. So now it just looks really nice up on the end of the uh, plenum there. Really stoked that I got that sorted. Just a bit of advice, if you ever are working on a car getting frustrated, it's getting to the end of the day, it's always best I've found just to leave it and come back the next day. Anyway, lots of parts turning up for this build. First thing that's turned up is all of our exhaust stuff. So here we have everything we need to make our exhaust. We're doing a full two and a half inch straight through exhaust. We'll have a muffler. We've got a flexi join here. We've got all of our 90 bends. This rod here we use for the exhaust hangers. And we're going to be making a full custom exhaust. Elijah at Springy Performance is making uh, a lobster dump tip for us. Um, because I don't have the skills to do that myself. And that's the part that I want it to be really tidy. If you don't know what a lobster dump tip is, that's this right here where it kind of dumps down looks like a lobster kind of thing super cool uh i really like him so we're gonna have the same thing on this car we're not going to be doing the exhaust today although i will tack weld i think just to dump on because the things that we are going to be doing today i'd like to take the car for a drive and i just want the dump tacked on so it's dumping down to the ground rather than pushing out towards the uh aircon unit another thing that's turned up our floodlights that go right here and the bumper, so just a quick example actually, if I can hold it up behind the bumper. So these will fit up super nice, just like that. Freaking pumped on them, because it took me ages to find the right diameter, which is 140 millimeters to fit into here. For, for these, we're gonna have to figure out how to mount them. I have a bit of an idea. But really pumped on those, they cost me 70 bucks. They're actually like four wheel drive lights that would go on the front of your four wheel drive bull bar. But whatever works, you know, all good. So today what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna fit a boost gauge up to our car. Uh, I'm also fitting up the actuator to the turbo because we really need that fitted, um, because at the moment, it's just held shut and that basically means it's free boosting so it'll just keep building boost up until the motor blows not what you want yeah so we're going to chuck this on a little bit of welding and cutting to be done and also i'm going to tack the dump on with the gasless mig um, but when we do the full exhaust build we'll be doing it with waz's mig gas mig really nice unit so it all looks tidy um, but for now i'm going to tack the dump on with the gasless mig which is super fine so that's the first job we're going to do when you get right into it. Suss it out, the first part of the exhaust is tacked on. I don't know why I'm so excited about this, but it's a pretty monumental moment, come on. Look at that, stoked. Also, our wastegate is now on, hell yeah, so we can get rid of this freaking line with a bolt in it that's blocking off our line. We can go ahead and actually chuck a line from the wastegate to that nipple. Ew. We now have boost control, which is fantastic. I always put the little jobs like that off because it's just so freaking tedious 
measuring it all up and tacking it up and making sure it's right and all that stuff but um really glad we got that done today now we can do the fun part that is installing a boost gauge this is another milestone when you're boosting a car you get to install the boost gauge it's a pretty big deal right because it means your engine is effectively making boost hopefully maybe uh and you're not just reading vacuum which is freaking sweet so i'll give you guys a bit of a rundown on what i'm thinking for the boost gauge setup so here we are in our beautiful interior that is tinted blue thanks to our red interior light so funny it came with the car by the way i did not do that also in case you haven't watched the previous episodes yeah we have interior leds as well so that's what's up taking it all the way back to 1999 so we have a super basic boost gauge here this guy lights up blue reads boost that's it it's all it does it probably isn't even accurate but uh we're gonna throw it in for now i'll upgrade at some point this is just one that i had at the shop uh, but it'll show us whether we're actually just reading boost or not. I'm sure it's accurate within one or two pounds. Um, but there's this little like divot down here, which looks like a pretty sweet spot to put a boost gauge. So I'm pretty much going to have this like sitting nice and tucked away in there. You know, I could have it up here or up here, but this Evo Dash just really gets me going. And I don't want to have any kind of boost gauge or anything in the way. You know what I mean? So I feel like just down here is just a nice spot. So we'll hole saw a hole through here, have it all sitting up nice on the, on the angle freaking just like that of course we're gonna have to take the car for a drive to test it and make sure that it's making boost you know because pretty much any reason to take this thing for a test drive you drill hole saw no f's given attitude Let's see if this is gonna work <laughs> all right moment of truth did my idea work or was it a massive fail when I've got a giant hole in my dash? Oh, look at that. A bit of weather focus. That is literally actually perfect. And it works with the gauges. That is freaking dope. So now all we have to do is run our vacuum line, which I have in my hand. To the gauge so to do that there is a line right here coming off the uh, plenum that was used for the charcoal canister which we've deleted so i'm going to run the boost gauge off that line i'll run it through a grommet in the firewall to the back of the gauge and then we're going to go for a drive simple yet effective <laughs> First lines here, so we'll cut it to length, chuck it onto the back of our boost gauge. Technically, we should see some vacuum when we start the car. The real test, though, will we see any vacuum? Oh, yeah. There she goes. Time to go for a drive. And yes, I am wearing a helmet so that you can, so that I can have the GoPro on my head. So you're welcome. I'm gonna look like an absolute idiot driving on the street with a helmet, but this is for you, so. have much brakes because I forgot to, that we had to bleed them so we've got to be a little bit careful in fact we don't really have much brakes at all so <laughs> man that goes hard but there's literally no brakes Oh, this is so dodgy. Should be right. Handbrake's good enough, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, I literally have no brakes. So I just spent the last 20 minutes bleeding the brakes to get them to work so we could take it for a drive. Even though it's dark outside now, I just wanted to take you guys for a drive because you deserve it and I deserve it. But I literally can't get a single bit of brake feel. I've bleed the brakes up, there's not any air in the lines. I've got like one of the self bleeder things. Yeah, bleed it fully, use almost a whole container of brake fluid. Zero brake feel. When I start the car, straight to the floor, move the car forward a little bit, and it literally won't stop at all. So that's pretty interesting. Maybe you guys can chime in on that one in the comments below because I have no idea. But either way, still a pretty successful day. Did see that it made a couple of pounds on the um, on the boost gauge before I stopped with the pull, A, because our car's not tuned, and B, I had no brakes. But nonetheless, we got some good stuff done today. So tomorrow we'll probably be installing the spotlights and potentially painting the rocker cover as well. So feel free to guess what color it's gonna be in the comments below. But all in all, pretty sick day. Much better than yesterday, so super happy. Thank you once again, guys, for all the support that I've had on this build. It's pretty nuts. The channel is growing massively. And if you are enjoying these videos, make sure you hit that like button and feel free to subscribe. I'm gonna keep these builds up consistently. You may also notice that there are no mid-roll ads. I only have ads at the start. That's because I want you guys to enjoy these videos uninterrupted. So if you want to give back, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And of course, jump onto laxadco.shop if you want to grab a sticker, snapback, or t-shirt. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. You! Peace!